So I'm preparing for a trip and I was thinking about it. If I could only have one multimeter, um, what would it be? Now that question per person kind of depends on what you do. Um, I do electronics. I do um, AC work. I do higher current AC work. I do, um, you know, some work out in the field where I'm working on vehicles and things like that. So for me, my needs may be different than yours, but I got to thinking about it. If I could only have one meter and I decided to set a $100 price limit, so that takes this out. Um, if I could only have one meter, what would it be? And as I sort of looked at it, I mean, you know, of what I have, I would probably take this single Kaiweets HT-111A, but if it was my only meter total, I don't know that it would quite be enough. So I got looking around and thinking like, you know, what would I buy if I was only going to have a single meter for all my needs? And uh, I found one that looked interesting. Now, I'm not prejudging it. I'm going to give it a thorough review. But the one that I came up with was this one. This is the Kaiweets clamp meter, the HT208D. And uh, I saw this on Amazon and I asked Kaiweets to send it to me and they did. Now I wanna be very clear, they didn't come to me and say, hey, will you review one of our clamp meters? I went to them and said, I'm looking for this style meter, will you send me one? And uh, this is part of a range, they have a couple different uh, versions of it that we'll probably talk about later in the video. But the first thing we need to do is unbox it. I have not even looked at this thing, so I'm not prejudging and telling you right now that if I could only have one meter, this is what I would have, but I'm starting to think that this style might be what I would want. So let's unbox it. Um, so it does come with this carrying case. Now the first thing that you notice is it's a chunky meter. So where uh, this one just goes in my regular electrical toolbox, uh, this is, you know, this is a piece of equipment to carry around. So we're gonna open it up and see what we got. So we have the little case, which is nice because uh, my other ones get kind of scratched up. And it uses AAA batteries, which uh, people who are into meters tend to like that over the nine volt batteries because they're just easier to find and cheaper and all that stuff. Uh, we'll set the meter aside. We have, a, I'm guessing is a K type thermocouple type thing for temperature measurement. So, you know, that immediately. So back in the day when I was working in New York City, uh, I had one of these also, this is a Fluke 51. Uh, and this meter just did temperature. It had a K thermocouple right here. You could compensate for it there. And, uh, you know, but now that's just part of your everyday multimeter. And it has the Kai Wheats probes and I do like these probes um, compared to some of the other ones that come with the less expensive multimeters. So these are, uh, let's see what these are. Uh, these are still, oh yeah, they're, these are actually probably softer than my other Kaiweets probes. Maybe I'm wrong there, but they, they've got a good soft feel and as well as the uh, covers for, what is that, for 600 volt stuff. Um, and then they have, has a book in here, which I'm gonna leave there for now. Now the uh, meter itself, let's take a quick look. Nope, I'm ripping the wrong side of the bag. Uh, there we have it. I'm gonna stick some batteries in there and just kind of give an initial first impression and then I'm gonna put the thing to use. Now the first thing I noticed, and it's not a deal breaker for me, but um, when I was putting the batteries in, I went to put the back on and I noticed that the screw was no longer in the battery holder. And uh, I looked around and didn't see it and it was stuck to the end of my magnetic screwdriver. Um, on these type of things, especially when you're doing something like this in a field, I would really like to see the screw be captive uh, where there's some kind of clip on the other side that prevents the screw from backing out. You know, when you're doing something like this, you're having a bad day, you're changing uh, a lot especially something like this a lot of times you're using at a service entrance or something like that so you know you're outside and you're changing batteries on a bad day you don't want to lose that screw uh, especially because it doesn't clip in at all i'd be perfectly fine if it just clipped in but uh you know so again not a deal breaker but um that is the first thing i've noticed so uh, we're going to do the peel now a lot of times i actually do leave the cover on on these things but you know for your sake i'll take it off uh, so we have, that is a very nice display. I don't think you guys can see the color as well as I can, but that is actually like a very, very clear, like it looks like OLED type display. It's, uh, I mean, it is crystal clear. Uh, so we've got up to uh, VFD inrush. We've got 60 to 100 amps. We've got a thousand amps. Uh, we've got voltage, um, 
AC and DC. We've got Hertz measurement, which is kind of sweet. We've got capacitor and um, continuity and resistance and temperature and uh, low current and non-contact voltage line. Uh, I like that. So, okay. Now it does have a flashlight, which I'm a big fan of. Um, I will say it hits the end of the clamp and that could be pro or con. You know, if you're sticking this thing in a tight area, it is kind of nice that the flashlight, um, you know, hits right where you're trying to probe. And I do like that the flashlight turns off when you turn the meter off uh, automatically, but, and you can't accidentally turn this thing on while the meter is off, which is kind of nice if you've got it in a bag. Um, now, I feel like I'd be doing a disservice to um, to do a full review of this thing after just unboxing it. I will say it's uh, it's got a good feel to the hands, especially on the sides. The back is a little slipperier, but you've got some good grip here. And uh, for me, you know, in my size hands, this thing just feels like it fits good. The spring is good. Um, this is chunky and clicky and feels well-made and all that stuff. So overall first impressions, are um, really good, especially when you compare it to something like this, which is uh, 30 years older. You know, you've just got, they've come a long way in terms of what you get with a meter. So um, I'm gonna continue to look at it and uh, we'll see what we come up with. All right, so it has been two very long weeks uh, since I recorded the introduction to this video. And just to recap, uh, I decided that I was gonna use this as my only multimeter for that time. And so uh, the first thing this thing did was went over to the school bus conversion where we cut the roof off and uh, there was a problem with the headlights. And so I used it to diagnose uh, that one of the lights was not getting 12 volts and using the continuity test to figure out um, where we were messed up and use the voltmeter on this thing to figure out where I could pick up 12 volts to turn on that headlight and you know create the switch and all that kind of stuff. So uh, in that case, I took it and used it as a general multimeter. Then uh, the thing came back with me and got on a plane to New Jersey and then went to a factory up in another state that I will not mention and uh, did a little bit of work up there. And then I went back to New Jersey and uh, my mom was replacing her countertops and had replaced some outlets. And I went in and uh, did some testing to make sure they weren't drawing too much current on those outlets and on those lines themselves, helped replace some outlets and switches and things like that. Again, use the non-contact part, use the clamp meter, uh, use the voltage test and all that kind of stuff. And then uh, drove it back down and from there, um, my refrigerator went out. So I actually used a few parts of that. I checked the run capacitor. It actually had a start run capacitor with the capacitance tester, all was good there. I um, took the thermocouple and stuck, I had the whole meter just sitting up on top of the fridge and stuck it in the freezer so I could get a second temperature measurement um, there. And uh, ultimately it was an LG one that had a compressor that was recalled. And so they did replace that free of charge. But the uh, Kiwitz HT208D was up to the task for that. Um, then I used it around my office for a couple days and then took a drive out to Sarasota area in Florida, which is about three and a half hours from me and, um, wound up using it on repairing a CNC machine turned out to be a bad fan and, uh, diagnosed that actually was given a bad power supply from that point, tested the power supply, figured out that was a problem. And then, uh, you know, fix the fan. And then beyond that, there was an air conditioner that went out. And so went out there to check the start run capacitor on the outside compressor, but there was compressor oil all over the place. So did not need to be called into service for that. So this meter has been thoroughly tested. I used it for um, AC amp measurement. I didn't do any DC amp measurement. Um, and that is one of the cool things about this. It's very, very rare to find uh, a meter of this style that will do DC amperage. And in fact, it will do it up to um, a thousand amps, which is really cool. And so, um, but I didn't need that in my everyday life, but I did test basically everything else on it. And uh, all the features really came in handy. You can see I did scratch the screen just a little bit in my everyday use. Um, so I think I feel qualified to not just say like, hey, I've had this for a day or two and I wanna give you my impressions. I wanna give you my real impressions. So um, it is weird for me 
to use this form factor as my everyday multimeter. And again, there's just nothing, there's nothing wrong with it, but I'm so used to this style meter and this style screen and all that, that, um, you know, this is just a little bit weird, but the more I used it, like I did like it. In fact, one of the things I did all the time, you may hear me kind of lament about this, that these meters do not come with, um, hold it. I mean, I guess it's got like a little keyhole thing, but, uh, they don't come with, uh, you know, a little thing to hang the meter and you know, you've got two wires and you've got two hands and then you've got a meter. So it's really handy to, um, be able to hold the meter. So I actually use the clamp, uh, to hold the meter all the time. Um, I'll clamp it onto anything. I'll clamp it onto a handle or something like that. And I'll use it to hold the meter while I'm measuring stuff. And I actually find that really handy, uh, not an intended use, but I like it. Um, as far as downsides, uh, the one thing I would say is that when you are outside, um, I do not love the screen outside. Now the, pro is that when you're inside, this screen is so much nicer to read. And so a lot of times when you're doing things with electronics and stuff like that, you're inside. And I'll say my meter is going to be inside 90% of the time at least. And that's really handy. But when you're outside, this side screen, this type of screen is a little bit easier to read. Um, that being said, I was able to read this screen. It's just not as readable outdoors as something like this, where you can read this uh, either way. So that would be one thing I would say is a little bit of a, a downside with this. Um, and I think that's basically all the things I really didn't like about it. Um, it is a little weird that when you turn on the flashlight here, which I can't do it, it's off. Um, when you turn the flashlight on here, that it is kind of pointing at the clamp itself, which, uh, you know, it's not that you can't use it, but you have to, if you really need the maximum light, you kind of want to open the clamp a little bit, but you're still hitting the clamp over here. Um, again, that's a little nitpicky. I don't hate that. Um, the last thing is the non-contact voltage on here, uh, which we have this non-contact voltage thing. It's, um, it's up here in the chunky part of the meter. So sometimes it's a little awkward to get in there. And again, you don't base your life on a, uh, a non-contact voltage tester, but getting it in the right spot. Yeah. So you see that getting it in the right spot to detect the non-contact voltage is a little awkward. So the initial premise of the video was that if I could only have one multimeter, um, and that meter had to be less than a hundred bucks, would I buy this meter? And I would say, uh, absolutely. Yes. This thing did everything that I needed to do in my wide range of applications over the course of the couple of weeks. And I have no doubt that it would do basically anything that I would ever need it to do. Um, now again, there are some advanced features on things like this that are more geared toward electronics that this one doesn't do, but for your basic everyday stuff, this one covers everything. And if I could only have one, um, I would choose this one. Now, all that said, if I adjusted the requirements ever so slightly, this would not be the meter I choose. Um, this is the HT208D, and there is a slightly cheaper, and by slightly, I mean a little bit under $50, HT206D, which does basically everything this one does, except it only reads up to 600 amps, which is plenty for most people. Now, I actually do need to be able to read a little bit over 600 amps, um, so I wanted this one in particular, but if I could adjust my requirements ever so slightly, I would buy the version of this that is $50 and I would take the money that I saved and I would buy this one, the HT-118A. So you could get the two of these together for the price of just this one. So you get the 206D and the HT-118A for about 75, 80 bucks. And if you did that, that would be the ultimate combo if you wanted multiple meters. But if you only wanted one meter and you could only have one meter and you had to spend less than a hundred bucks, then I think you're hard pressed to beat this one. So, hey, thanks for watching. Have a great day.